Hey guys, sorry, we're having some tech problems. I just wanted to jump on here very quickly and talk about a brand new study that came out that our good friend, Dr. Carla Kessie sent us. This is a kind of like an urgent study she wanted me to tell pet parents about. <clears throat> Check it out. <clears throat> There's a lot of flea and tick products, of course, circulating around the world right now. It's springtime in most parts of the world. So a lot of people are using insecticides to keep their pets safe and protected. The new study that came out, it's labeled the effects of fipronil on emotional and cognitive behavior in animals. And it talks about, you know, what is potentially going on when veterinarians and pet parents are going to the clinics and they're getting these type products, whether they come in like, you know, chewable caplets or they come in these little like squeeze bottles and they're putting it on their pets. Some pets are seeing or suffering through different types of reactions, like they seem a little bit anxious, a little bit excited. Uh, dogs and cats might, you know, have some sort of stress reaction. So the scientists want to know why, why this is going on. Now, the term fipronil is the insecticide that's used in a lot of these products that you will see. Fipronil is a very popular, in fact, it may be the most popular worldwide distributed veterinary drug used to control fleas and ticks. It's not just though in clinics, you can also find it in hardware stores. So check it out right there. Fipronil, as you'll see, granular ant killer. This is something, of course, you can put around your property or around your lot and it'll like obliterate ants. Um, you'll also find like sprayable products like here, look, this will obliterate termi termites and insects. There it is right there, uh, Fipronil. So companies have taken these type of products and they put them in these like squeezable liquid type droppers for you to apply on your pet or they've sort of put them in these caplets. Now, before we keep going, this is really important. I know some people might be watching this and maybe somebody might have a genius idea. Do not put any of these products on your pets. These are heavily concentrated products. You will severely hurt your pet. But back to the flea and tick treatments. So what did the study actually reveal here? Remember, the scientists were trying to figure out why these animals were experiencing these type of like excitement or stressful reactions that they were going through. So the first part of the study is the scientists wanted to know when you put these like type of droppers on your dogs and cats, where is it ending up? Where is stuff like this actually going in the body? This is kind of shocking. Check this out. It makes its way through the adipose tissue, the testes, the liver, the adrenal glands, the kidneys, the spleen, the heart, the olfactory bulbs, the cerebrum, the cerebellum, the brain. It's actually going everywhere. In fact, they were testing these levels five days in and they still found this product circulating everywhere. But yes, it was ending up in the brain. So the new study, of course, I had to pay for this. Um, I'll drop the link to the abstract to the study in the comment section. But if you go into the discussion section, when this stuff was going into the brain, was it causing issues? According to the scientists, they believe, they theorize, yes, so. In fact, it was altering the neur neurotransmitters inside the brain, affecting like the levels of dopamine and serotonin that needs to be released. That's a big problem when it comes to your pets. If you talk, if the scientists in the study will say, this could affect like the memory of your pet, if they might seem a little bit dazed or confused. In fact, it can affect short-term and long-term memory. It can create anxiety. It can create stress, learning disorders, sleeping disorders, lack of motivation. So according to the scientists, there's a lot of side effects that could potentially happen by using these products. Now, is this the only type of fipronil study that's come out in the past? No, there's a bunch of links in here referencing it. First of all, in 2008, fipronil was shown to attach to the GABA receptors in the brain. So this is already shown in the past. In 2012, they were able to show that fipronil causes oxidative stress in the body by crea creating what's called ROS, reactive oxygen species. This wreaks havoc on the body. A study in 2016, which again showed that it was causing short-term and long-term memory issues. And then finally, in 2020, fipronil was found to change the levels of dopamine and 5-HT in vertebrates and invertebrates brains. There's a whole bunch of research. In fact, this isn't the first time we're seeing fipronil in the news, even this year. Check it out. <clears throat> Five months ago, The Guardian posted an article, Pet Flea Treatments Poisoning Rivers Across England. I had a whole bunch of environmentalists and friends send me this study. The, study, uh, the new study was published in the Journal of Science and Total Environment. What the scientists found was that when people are putting these products onto their pets or giving them these chewables and the animals are going into the lakes and into the rivers, these products 
are getting into the water. In fact, 4,000 samples were collected. 99% of the samples had fipronil in them. Not just that, but they were at 38 times higher the legal safety limit, which is a huge problem destroying the environment. According to the scientists, check it out. One applicator, one application, the size of a quarter. In fact, it's the quarter is even bigger than this application. I had no idea. The, environment, the environmentalists told me that one applicator has enough pesticide to kill 60 million bees globally. So this might flood people onto other products. There's some other popular products onto the market. So you might be think, seeing things like Brevecto, Nexgard, Semperica, Crudelio, Revolution. Isozazoline is used in a lot of these products and this has been a huge topic all last year. I know the problem is with the pandemic, it literally suppressed a lot of news. Go to the FDA, the Food and Drug Inspection Agency in America. Check it out. This is for veterinarians and pet owners. Fact sheet for pet owners and veterinarians about the potential adverse events associated with isozazoline flea and tick products. This is a huge problem that not a lot of people know about. So if you take your brand of flea and tick product, you Google the FDA, odds are this article will pop up. Check it out. Their words, not mine. Isozazoline products have been associated with neurological adverse events like seizures. I know that we posted a, like, a little trailer to this prior and people were posting in there that their dogs were having seizures and suffering all of these reactions. I am sure in the comment section right now, people are going to say the type of issues that their, parent, their pets have had. Uh, dysbiosis, like leaky gut was occurring, dogs and cats all of a sudden developing like allergic type reactions. Elevated liver enzymes. How many people after this, like, they go back to their vet and they're like, hey man, you got elevated liver enzymes and they can't correlate it to some of these projects, so uh, products. So a huge heads up for people. Now you might be saying, I've used this product, I haven't had any problems, what's the big deal? Check it out. This is a peer reviewed study that was done last summer. Survey of canine use and safety of isozazoline parasiticides. Look at the highlighted section here on the bottom. When any flea treatment was given, adverse events like reactions were reported for 66% of the respondents in this peer reviewed study. 2,700 plus people filled out the study, pet parents, who use these products on their dogs and on their cats, 66% of their pets had a reaction. That means if you use some of these products, according to this peer-reviewed study, you have a one-third, you have a 33% chance of your pet not having a reaction and you skimming by with good luck. So this is a huge problem. Please, if you know anybody that's using any of these products and maybe their pets don't know, share this information with them if you can. Now, I reached out to the good, Becker, the good doctor, Dr. Karen Becker, the most followed veterinarian in the entire world, told her what was going on, shared the study with her. Um, she pulled out some stuff out of our new book that's coming out called The Forever Dog. There is a now a support detox PDF, free PDF for people who are using these products that have to use these products but want to detox their pets. As always, we put all our free stuff on the foreverdog.com. So all you gotta do is scroll down. I know sometimes it's hard to find people will say, you'll see a little section right there, you click on it. At least there's, you'll get a free PDF of what to do. There's a whole bunch of publications and research journals for people that you know want extra science. It's all in there. The biggest question people are gonna say is, I've seen all of this now. Thank you for telling me about these pesticides, but what's a really good pesticide I can put on my pet? That's the problem. It's a pesticide, right? You, there's always caution labels on these products, right? You're not going to feel super comfortable when you take some of these things and you give it to a baby. You're going to freak out, right? So it, it's, it's, a, it's like a misnomer when you think about it. If you're looking for other alternatives, this is my 10th year doing this, just Google Rodney Habib, Dr. Karen Becker, Flea and Ticks. We've got videos. We've got articles. We'll post some here in the comment section. This is important information for people to, to know because when you know you are a better pet parent. Nobody wants to see their pet get hurt. And of course, you want to protect your pets. Thanks so much, folks, for watching this. Like I said, please share it with somebody that might need it. Thanks, guys.